this is uh, Morten from Inkish TV and uh, once again we are on these uh, remote uh, camera tours and this time I am so honored and pleased to welcome a very special guest, uh, Mr. Alon Bashani. I think that uh, Alon is uh, probably one of the best known uh, former CEOs and, and uh, still like a very important person in the industry. But uh, Alon, um, you changed from AP HP some a month ago. How long time ago is it that you left uh, HP? About six months. Well, six months is also some time, right? So, uh, Alon, uh, the reason why I, I asked you to uh, do this little session with me is because uh, uh, just a week ago, I think, uh, it was announced that you are now the uh, the chairman of uh, another Israeli success company, uh, Hikon. Can you tell a little bit about uh, your role and, and what have you been up to? You've been out fishing all the time since you left HP. Uh, not fishing, but... Uh... <laughs> It's been for the first time after 25 very intense year, a period where I could uh, spend a little bit more time uh, on hobbies, family, friends, catching up, some projects. Uh, I, I managed to put up solar panels on my roof. So now we're oh, generating great. our own energy, which is very good. And Israel has sun most of the year and I fixed my old turntable so I can listen to my record collection. So things you never get to, but... Um, I also spent a lot of time visiting um, Israeli startups, not just in the printing industry in general. And honestly, uh, when, when I was in Indigo, I was totally focused and working very hard and didn't have the time to, to see what's going on. It's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was called the Startup Nation, and I always thought it was a bit of a buzz. But when you spend time and you see the, the ideas and the the passion and uh, the innovation, it was fantastic. So it was, mm. a, it was a big change for sure. And um, I, I enjoyed the spirit and now uh, it's a new year and uh, I'm ready to start new adventures. Mm. Sounds fantastic. And uh, I can only uh, congratulate you on actually ex experience and discover the startup environment in Israel because I was in Israel just before the first lockdown. And it, it, it mm -hmm. seems that as we spoke about the last time you and I spoke was like Israel has a fantastic startup scene for not just in the printing industry, but for technology and in general. And I think that most of the world is a little bit jealous at you right now also because you were first movers when it comes to vaccinations uh, of the, the COVID vaccines, right? There are advantages to being small. There is an advantage to socialized medicine. I know it's not always popular to say that, but there is. <laughs> and then, you know, Israel is fully computerized. My wife and I got our second vaccine on Sunday. Everything was very organized. And literally one minute after we got the vaccine, we got a, a SMS with a link to the formal site where we got our certificate that we've been vaccine twice, et cetera, et cetera. So everything is computerized. And again, it's an advantage of a, of a small uh, country. We have our own numerous challenges, but uh, I guess that also helps to a culture of taking risks, moving fast. And indeed, it's it's way beyond printing and it's quite inspiring to see, especially the younger, the younger people that are, you know, still in their late thirties or early forties and they're doing their second or third startup. So it's, mm. it's fun to see. Mm. I, I, uh, I can't help think about it because, um, when I asked you for, for this chat, uh, I wrote that the subject could be like one thing I wrote vacuum. And I, the reason why I chose that word was because I, th I was thinking that, um, after 25 years with one company, uh, it must, regardless of the conditions for why you decided to leave or or, or, or left uh, HP, it must have been some kind of a vacuum because it's been, I mean, your role in the industry has been formed around Indigo and you have been, I mean, a tremendous uh, uh, inspiration and, and also uh, to Indigo brand, uh, very important with uh, both your customer interactions and also uh, presenting technologies at exhibitions and, and also the virtual ones. So how, I mean, the day you left, I'm not talking about HP as a company and, and, and the reasons why you left, but the, the first day you woke up and you basically didn't have a job. How was that? It's, it's very emotional, you know, for sure. Because for mm -hmm. me, Indigo was like many of my generation, right? We were like the, we saw it as a life mission, not as a job. And there were better periods and worse periods, but uh, we, we felt this togetherness of creating something and... Um, 
So it was it was a big change, mm. and um, you know it, it was something which you needed to come to term with. It's a bit like a divorce or a mourning yeah. period. You know you need to go through this. And yeah. many times when I was talking to younger people, I always told them if you have the opportunity and you're leaving, take a few months to spend time on yourself, your family, and also really get to know what you're feeling and. Don't rush into any decision if you can afford it, you know. Yeah, now, yeah. Because of COVID, we couldn't travel the world and visit a lot of people we wanted to. So uh, it was a strange time because of COVID. And it was a period. The, the feedback and the interaction with the, the Indigo team, the customers, the partners, the industry was fantastic. So honestly, I got a lot of love, which helped me because it was, it was tough. Yeah. Um, I even start discovering new things and, yeah. uh, you know, moving on. It's, I think it's not change is always difficult, but it's natural. It's, it's okay. Mm. I even saw that uh, because uh, I was, um, I was looking a little bit on the net, of course, before having this conversation. And, and I couldn't help think about that. You get uh, even YouTube films saluting you. And, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite amazing to see. And it's in a positive way, of course, but it's quite amazing to see. Uh, the influence that you have had on uh, or have on the industry and and I, I can imagine that and the reason why I wanted to talk about the vacuum because I totally get what you say that it's like a divorce or a morning uh, morning um, morning period uh, of of leaving something that has been so much a part of your life mm -hmm. and and uh, and it, it, the, it must have been quite overwhelming because just the messages I oh. saw on, on 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 the net is just amazing. But I'll tell you two things, and, and this is one of the reasons, or two reasons why I love the printing industry, and I'm getting to know many other industries, and we'll see where it goes. But um, first of all, the printing industry is largely small family businesses. That This is what they do for their lives, for their for a generation. And I've seen the transition. I've seen fathers move the business to their children, which is tough. I've seen people sell their companies to bigger companies, and Sometimes they stay and sometimes they leave. So it's a very emotional industry, which is fantastic. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. like to work in a world without emotions. The second thing, which is actually one of my thoughts after the last six months, from the outside, people see printing as very conservative, old, maybe declining. The truth is, at least the innovators in this industry, they're very similar to startups. Yeah. Most of the startups I'm, I'm working with now, they have 30, 40, 60, 80 employees, you know, revenue of five, 10 million dollars, some less, and they all want to grow more. And, and the good Indigo customers and Hikon customers and in general, the innovators, they're startups. Yeah. They have 20, 30, 40 people. They're changing their model from analog to digital to web to from uh, conventional printing to packaging. It doesn't matter. But, The successful customers have a lot of commonality with the, with the startup. Mm. And, that, and that's, that's what's fun. So uh, it's emotional, but, but, but again, that's what I like. I wouldn't like to yeah. work in an area where everything is very transactional. Every two years, people change roles because it's just a job. For, for mm. us in the printing industry, I think our customers, it's a job. It's, it's what we do. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure there are other industries like that, but in printing, this is for me the special bonding. And that's why DScoop and other communities are so vibrant, because I mm. think we, we all have this common mm. emotional view. It's funny that you mentioned that. I did an interview with, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but uh, another Israeli from Twain. And uh, and uh, basically, uh, when I said startup, he took it as a negative word. And I said, I, I consider Inkish as a startup. I consider being a startup having that... Uh, Mm, openness to innovation uh, being very agile and that is exactly what you're talking about right so you see that as a very positive word to take very positive yeah so uh alon um uh one one thing is is the vacuum and, and leaving uh, a company like hp but you have of course uh, got a lot of experience being part of that journey um what is it that makes you special Well, <laughs> should ask my wife. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to hear the answer. But, uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, look, I am not a scientist or a technologist. So my added value to the technology of Indigo is very limited. You know, you, you over time have intuitions, you understand a little bit. But I, I think there are two things that uh, I, you know, I hope 
people would say was my contribution. One is around the strategy and the, and the customer focus. So I think Indigo over the years really grew a lot because we listened very closely to our customers. I spent half my time or almost half my time with customers, visiting them, big ones, small ones, it didn't matter. And, and really trying to listen. And Israelis were not always very good at listening, but you force yourself, especially to hear the bad things. Where can you approve? Mm-hmm. Where is competition better? And, and we had amazing customers that shared. So so for me, being customer centric, it's not a buzzword. It's, it's a mm-hmm. whole philosophy and, mm-hmm. and the system. And the second thing is, is just the internal values of the company. I, I find that when you when you have a strategy and a culture that people buy into, um, people will stay for a long time. They'll give everything they have. And then when times are good, it's easy. When times are bad, and you know, now is a tough time, 2008, yeah. nine was a tough time, 2001 was a tough time. Uh-huh. Then people give back a lot more than than yeah. you give. So for me, you know, success beyond, of course, you need technology and you need supply chain and you need a lot of processes. Yeah. If, if you're very focused on customers and you have a great culture, which rewards teamwork, innovation, is willing to fail and then learn. I think these are things which I've learned from our customers and from many other people in, in Indigo. It's it's by no means, you know, one man show. It's sort of a DNA that, that mm. is slowly uh, grown and um, you know, I think again this is what I'm going to try to bring to Icon and other companies uh, mm. because again I'm not a technologist and many people know the the details of any field a lot more than I do yeah. hopefully I can bring the customer centricity into any company I work with Mm. Um, the first time I met you, uh, I didn't know you. I know you of name, but I didn't know how you looked, and and I didn't know. And I was, I think, as many other people may, f- the first time they need uh, meet you, is a bit surprised that you are so casual. Uh, you were wearing a sweatshirt, and and uh, basically, you actually also, I think, I remember that you had a flag on your sweatshirt from Sweden because we met in Sweden. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you talk about this customer centric and you also talk about this uh, listening and thing, I think there's a big difference whether you come in a in a, in a sweatshirt or you come in a suit, uh, especially with some printing companies. Is that something that you did on purpose or is that just part of your personality? You know, now I'm getting a lot of photo albums that people are sending me with pictures from so, you know, in the first years when you visited customers in Europe or the United States, you were sort of expected to come in a suit. And I never yeah. felt comfortable in that. But of course, you you have to honor the environment. So the whole world has become more casual in the mm. printing industry, for sure. I personally don't really like suits. But, you know, when I went to Drupa, I went with a suit. This Drupa, which didn't happen, we already made a decision. We're not going to show up in suits because because it's enough. Yeah. Um, but... I, I think Israelis, and again, I think it's the same in Sweden. I mean, for us, hierarchy is not very important. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Indigo by by choice and by culture it was a very equal company. There were no mm-hmm. hierarchy mm-hmm. symbols. I, for me, it's a value. I mean, I just I just don't like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to have differences in salaries, and you know, of course, there there are differences mm-hmm. in managers and whatever, but. Uh, I, I've just learned through the years that uh, you sometimes learn the most from very unexpected people. And uh, the fun part is, is actually getting to know the people and understanding that people are different. So for me, it's uh, it was natural. And, uh, you know, the dress is just I don't like. But I, uh, <laughs> but I can't help but I can't help think about because uh, when you say what you just did uh, and I, I, I agree with you on that one but I can't help think about that if you look at HP as a company it's a it's also a computer company it's also a white page format it's it's a lot it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's I mean it's a lot of different things right and I was just wondering because I think that what you talk about that was very much the DNA of Indigo right it was less the DNA of the rest of the HP organization right. Yeah, for sure. Look, I, I've had the, the the luck to work in totally different environments. Before, you know, before HP acquired Indigo, we were a small, publicly traded company. Before that, I worked in a big Israeli chemical company. I worked in the Bank of Israel, and I've worked with many of our customers that are family businesses or or big, you know, old kind of fashion giants. So, 
I've seen many things and there's no perfect solution, right? It's uh, mm. at the end, it's people are people. And uh, this world is so diverse that it's impossible to sit anywhere in Israel, in the mm. United States, to really understand China, India, Japan, Brazil. They're all so mm. different. So, you know, mm. HP has this mega culture. It's an American company. It's publicly traded in Wall Street that drives certain things. But Israel is very far away from Palo Alto, and HP has <laughs> operations in Korea and mm -hmm. in Barcelona. So I think I love diversity, and I yeah. think you need to understand that there's a limit to how much you can ever, even if you're there a lot, fully mm -hmm. understand how different Israelis are from Europeans or Americans, and how different Germans are from Austrians. So yeah. it's like you know, you, and then you have to accept that, and and it's like. Take the best of all of it. And mm. on the other hand, when you have a common purpose, and, and D-Scoop is a great example, mm. you have people from all around the world coming together and, and literally becoming friends because it's not a two or three year job. It's 20, 25 years. And you know, you know, many of our customers I'm still in touch with just because I enjoy talking to them and we've become friends. So that mm. that's a gift in business. To be able, and you know that because you see, yeah. you know, the same people for many yeah, years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I I actually thought you were going to say because uh, we actually share a, an interest in uh, in music. Uh, I thought you would say that uh, yeah. that part of your of your DNA and part of how you have influenced Indigo is also because you have the creativeness from being a guitar player. I first of all, I you know, I love music. I've had the fortune of playing many places around the world. Um, you know, there are many, you, you think a lot in this kind of a period of the role of a conductor in an orchestra and what it means and they're interesting videos that you can watch on that. I, I think at least from my perspective, I, uh, I don't like very simple music, right? I don't like music with just two or three chords and the same rhythm. I, I like more complex stuff, which uh, sometimes is not always pleasant, but it changes and it evolves. So. For me, you know, there was an element of jazz and maybe, you know, improvisation in all the industry, which which I think is which I think is good. Again, to do great music, you need to be very good at what you do. You need to play as a team. You need to practice a lot. It's not mm. just you just come in and play. So there is also the discipline. Mm. But yeah, this is graphic arts. There's arts. Mm. There's there's mm. creativity. If all you mm. have is just you play the notes, you can play beautifully, but it doesn't touch your emotions. So, yeah, mm. I think mm. music definitely had an impact on on how I saw life and how I mm. wanted mm. to impact the world. Sure. I can't help think about, I before I joined the printing industry, I worked as a marketing manager for Roland, you know, the keyboard and uh, manufacturer mm -hmm. from Japan. And uh, when I decided to uh, stop in the music business and go into the printing industry, I actually said to my wife that it was because I thought that both industries have this creativeness and this uh, openness mm -hmm. towards other people. And I think that is actually what you say here, is that you that you have uh, the, 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 the good sides of both uh, the the creativeness but also of course the professionalism in delivering something which is you have to be good at it otherwise you would not be successful and the fact that you take totally different sounds and you <laughs> merge them together and everybody does their part and when it mm. works it's amazing yeah if it doesn't work and everybody's a little bit off or they don't know what to do it's a disaster but uh mm. a good rock band or a good orchestra or a good jazz band it's like everybody does their own thing and then you hear something wonderful and you can listen to different, you know, you have to learn how to listen to music also. But mm -hmm. I, I think music is a great analogy for business. And mm -hmm. I learned probably more from that than just by reading a lot of, you know, textbooks, which are interesting, but okay, that everybody can read. So, um, Hikon, uh, we have worked, actually Hikon uh, is the company that made Inkish, uh, what Inkish is because it was our very first customer. So <laughs> we have a deep passion for Hikon and, and the people working there. And we have also been in, in at Hikon's uh, uh, headquarter just before the first lockdown. So they had an IPO uh, just before Christmas and it was pretty successful, wasn't it? Yes, it was very successful. Uh... Israel has a, has a big environment of startups and funding through private equity and VCs and a lot of IPOs in NASDAQ. But the Israeli market itself, for various regulatory reasons, was never that receptive. Mm -hmm. And the government has worked to change that. And, and Haikon and Shlomo specifically saw the opportunity and was one of the first companies to, to be able to go and 
and raise a significant amount of uh, of cash, which is fantastic because it gives you a little bit more uh, funding sources because B VCs and private equity are great, but they have their own way of running the company. And being publicly traded actually, you know, like always, it has disadvantages, but it does have the transparency. You have to have the rigor. It's not privately held. You have shareholders. So I think it's not just the money, which is important. It, it's a very good uh, platform for the company to to scale and to give visibility and, and, and mm -hmm. earn the trust of not only investors, but the customers that to, you say what you're going to do, you do what you say, and, and you grow all the time. Mm. And um, the reason why I mentioned this is because I think that uh, I think that quite a few people have, of course, been wondering what what is the next uh, Alain Bachani uh, adventure. And I think that uh, though I, I feel that that Hikon is a, a well respected company, I, 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 I regard, regardless also think that maybe some was a little bit surprised that that you announced this uh, this uh, chairman uh, board of the uh, yeah uh, chairman of the board uh, last week um the IPO and the fact that that you are now uh, getting involved with with Hikon without being able to talk about details is it because you see a, a huge growth plan for Hikon and that's why you want to be involved or where do you see your role specifically i mean because chairman of the board is still a little bit different from what you did at uh, HP right absolutely so look, I, I had to do some thinking what I want to do or not want to do. You know, I could have gone and joined a, a rock group of old people and uh, had fun. And maybe one that day would be, be nice too. But, uh, I, I still want to, you know, get up and, and feel that I'm active, I'm contributing to the Israeli industry, etc. And, and honestly, I, I, it wasn't like I said I want to continue in the printing world. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I think I had the best job in the printing industry for many years, and it wasn't like a prerequisite. And the, re the reality is I'm going to be chairman of a few different companies, not all in the printing industry. But but Hikon, uh, for many reasons, you know, made sense because uh, you know, it was founded by Indigo engineers 10 years ago. I think it's a disruptive technology, which clearly still hasn't fully matured. I, I know Shlomo and Simon Lewis and others for, for many years. And I think as, as chairman of the board, I can help in a modest way impact the things that I think are important and where I have added value without getting into day-to-day -day operational. But the, the question of customer centricity, culture, you know, building a roadmap, thinking about a, a large uh, business, building a strong management team. I think I can help Shlomo and the uh, and the team, which is a very very strong team, by the way, mm. which is great. <laughs> and do it in a you know in a way where I, I bring my experience, but I don't have to get involved day to day, and leave myself time to do other things, which are totally new for me, um, which is also fun, right? Because learning is what keeps you. Young, and I also have yeah. a lot to learn in Hikon because you know I know some yeah. of the customers in the industry, but I have a lot to learn about the technology and the company itself. So, mm. uh, but um, yeah. I, I agree with every, anything you say. Uh, everything you say, I was just wondering because I mean, you of course know that uh, when a, a, a personality like uh, Alan Bashani joins a company, uh, that alone can uh, maybe gain a little more attention to Hikon than that, or any company that you get involved with, at least in the printing industry. So was that a, a consideration you think from both sides that, okay, if you join the board and even if you become chairman of the board, even though that you're not really uh, involved in the daily operation, the strategic thing and the marketing and the Alan Bashani uh, kind of spirit, uh, will benefit the company just from the fact that you're part of it? I think, first of all, you know, my, myself joining is part of a bigger picture of building a new management team, which Shlomo started a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and raising money. So these mm -hmm. are the two actually most important things. I think, you know, the name is good. I wouldn't go to a company just so there's a name and, you know, it's, it's I not. I didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> No, no, but, but uh, you know, again, I, I want to be very, very clear that, uh, you know, my role is not to run the company. I, I, I love this printing business. What I'm doing now beyond learning the company is talking to a lot of customers that I know well and that I trust will tell me what's not good. Because <laughs> there are things that are not good, but if you yeah. don't hear them, then you can't 
fix it. And we know mm. there, there are issues. Mm. And, and until Icon raised the capital, it was very difficult to, to do everything we think we need to do. Now you have to prioritize it. And again, mm. for me, it's making sure that customers understand that the most important thing for the company is not the share price and not the bonus of the managers, it's customers being successful. And when you build that kind of a culture, it takes time, but I think good things happen, good people join the company and, and, and you know, we, we need now to, to help our customers and of course develop the roadmap and technology and all of that. So uh, I, I have this experience in the industry and, and I, you know, at the end I thought it makes sense to help another Israeli company um, and not just go to totally new, new fields. We'll, we'll see. I'll tell you in a year if it was a good decision. You'll tell me in a year based on what we achieved. That would be nice. Um, I can't help think about also uh, here on the last note here um, that it's a good timing because I think that uh, I spoke to Sheila Hammer uh, from Hikon uh, uh, maybe three, four months. I've been talking to her after, but like three, more, four months ago, we spoke about the fact that the pandemic and, and uh, the change in um, in con customer behavior from consumer's perspective with having, you know, locally produced uh, products and uh, uh, more personalization and all these things, it's the same kind of mantras that have been on the printing side for a long time, but where if you look at the Indigo, it was it was better than most in the beginning, but now it's superior because it was a development uh, process. Maybe mm -hmm. it's the same with the Hikon that, that you, are, you have the opportunity to, um, take advantage of the market development right now, not just because of the COVID, but because the uh, short runs and personalization and, and faster turnaround time. So that might be a very good uh, position to be in, yeah. right? Look, being in Indigo in the printing, we worked with a network of partners and we talked to customers. And the reality is over the last few years, which is nice to hear, people said, Ah, the indigo, it's no problem. You know, it's 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 not like it used to be that it was difficult. Says so it's still difficult, but it's not the problem. The bottleneck is the workflow, the bottleneck is the finishing, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. you look at the way the finishing is done today <laughs> for folding cartons or corrugated with these dots, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. So there is an opportunity. The world has moved to online shorter runs. Uh, Local shops continue to work, so you don't rely anymore on exports, you know, six weeks in a boat, etc. <laughs> so I think digital finishing in general, everything, not just what Icon is doing, but the whole field mm. has to be disrupted and has to change. You look, you know, mm. 10 years from now, 15 years, it has to be totally different. Mm. Mm. And it'll happen. Right? Yeah. Who will do it in what segment? What is the pace? I think Icon has a good chance. It has, mm. you know, a good base. It it, it 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 made mistakes like all companies. It's it's of learned course. from them. It, it's getting mm -hmm. our chance to, you know, really focus and and, and deliver. So yes, I think it's mm -hmm. an exciting opportunity and mm -hmm. and actually good timing. Hopefully, you know, this Corona in a few months will be behind us because today the reality yeah. is it's still yeah, the yeah. the midst of the third wave and very difficult and people are worried and waiting that you know this will go away. But yeah, eventually it will. And then yeah, I, I think it, will, it could yeah. be. A yeah. Hmm. I hope. Um, Alan Bashani, uh, thank you very much for your time here on Inkish TV. Uh, I know that uh, the films that we have, the one interview I did with you has been one of our most seen interviews. So even though the video quality was not as good as it was in, in, uh, in Gothenburg, I hope yeah. that what we talked yeah. about was interesting for a lot of people. So I wish you all the best, both with Hikon and your other ventures and of course in life as well. Well, that's more Thank important you. when the day is over. It's good to see you, and I hope you get back to Israel. You were here just before the first lockdown, so that you come back here right after the last lockdown, which I hope is maybe, soon behind. Uh, maybe I can take this opportunity to invite for a proper interview with a real camera so we can make it look good as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm vaccinated with two shots. In four days, I should be ready to go and travel. So the minute Europe opens up the borders, I will start traveling again. Look forward to, to seeing you live. Likewise. Thank you very much, Alon. Thank you. Thank you very much.